This will save me from the storm, but you will be consumed. <laughs> Once again, YouTube, and welcome back to the domain. It's the Arbiter's Quest. Yes. You know, you gotta ask the question, is this the greatest Banshee ever made? I would say probably it is. It's pretty close with the aerial ambush revisit that we got a couple of years ago, but in general, this is really nice. It's just so beautiful to see a classic Halo, uh, you know, Bungie Covenant Banshee. It just always brings me so much joy, and it comes with three great figures. I particularly love the way that they're all just standing there, lined up. It's very similar to the Falcon Sweep packaging, and yes, this is branded Halo Universe. The Falcon Sweep at first was not branded that, but Halo Universe is the brand new sweeping of anything, any set release, any figure that is not specifically Halo Infinite. I just love the whole aesthetic of this, but I much prefer the new packaging design where everything is so sleek. You still do have the photorealistic background, but everything else is, it, it's just so iconic, stand out, makes everything uh, pop. I know that people may have a hard time adjusting to the new logo, but it's so much better than this one. It's so clear, it's so obvious what you're buying, you can see it from a mile away. Love it. And uh, I imagine any set going forward will have that kind of design. We also have the two-in-one. Yes, when this set originally was revealed or teased, I was kind of disappointed that they didn't just commit to a full gold banshee. And I still kind of am, but I see what they did, I see why they did it, and I do like the fact that we've got a new purple banshee. So let's check it out, shall we? The Arbiter's Quest Banshee. Beautiful. And that Banshee does come with three iconic figures. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, for a lot of people, they don't need a new Arbiter, but this Arbiter did surprise me. I know a lot of people don't need a new Sese Refumi. That is, in my opinion, a bit of a strange choice. I would have much rather had a Heretic Elite and Heretic Grunt. Uh, besides, we barely get enough Grunt molds nowadays, so that would have been nice. Uh, yeah, the, the Banshee. Okay, where do we begin? I guess we will start with the figures first. Yeah, this Arbiter really, really surprised me. When I saw that we were getting another Arbiter, I just wasn't really that bothered. And uh, particularly like the Arbiter in Halo Heroes Series 5, 10th Anniversary. They were just very, very basic Arbiters, but this one is a lot better. This has improved greatly compared to any other Arbiter. And it's actually interesting because I've said this many times. Anytime I review an Arbiter that uh, is from the past, I always complain that there's no detailing inside the uh, sort of cracks and crevasses of his armor, all the indentations, all the uh, all the indentations, there's just no detail, but this time they've put a black wash through it. A wash is basically where you get watered down paint and you let it just leak and set into all the, uh, again, the crevasses, the crevasses, but it works so well and I, I love it so much. We did get a lot of really good paint apps on the Reaper Marami, but Thelvadum has always had pretty poor paint apps until now. I really love this. We've got the basic skin exposed on just his head. Again, it it would be nice to eventually have an elite head without the uh, hole. I said the same for Geklahar, but it's still okay. The Arbiter's armor is always iconic, always looks fantastic. Yeah, this purple is a really interesting choice. Very strange color. I've never seen a weapon this cartoony. I'd much prefer like darker tones, particularly like these plasma rifles are awesome. Though they are kind of like Storm Covenant color. They do work better, I think, than this goofy, really cartoonish purple. I'm not as much of a fan of that. The Arbiter aside though, we have these two heretic elites. They're both the exact same molds, exact same uh, level of paint apps, pretty much identical except for their colors. But their colors are what definitely set them apart. The community has been crying out for heretic figures for a long time, and I really do hope they make a heretic grunt in the future. He's got the classic energy sword, which is so funny we're still rocking that so many years later. Get Klahar did come with the newer one, which makes me feel like this is Halo 4, 5 infinite sword, and this is the Halo 1 to 3 and a bit of change sword. He's got the new elite hand, they both do, which is really nice. The mask is, uh, yeah, this soft plastic that uh, it really just... 
is perfect. It's it's molded so well. I also love how these are molded uh, that you have to sort of clip them in behind the chest. Like you insert this and then you clip the chests over and it just, it holds in place really nicely. And then yeah, a very generous amount of paint apps. Little green lights, six of them on his chest, little silver rims on his shoulders and green lights on the back. I particularly like those green lights because they feel like they're pulsing energy. Like they're actually part of a jump pack, which I, I, I do love. There's not many other paint apps, but there definitely doesn't need to be. And Sese has the exact same ones. The six lights, the shoulders, and the back. It is interesting, the color choice used for this uh, jump pack. I like that it's different to everything else, makes it stand out more. And I do really enjoy that these base plates are speckled effects, which, uh, you know, that's, that's just a nice change of pace, honestly. These three figures are great. And uh, there's not really much else to say other than I, I compliment them very highly. Yes, we didn't need another Sese because we've had him in Halo Heroes and very recently in the 20th character pack. But when the 20th character pack released or was revealed, I did predict correctly that we're going to see any of the figures that were in that set repurposed into future sets. For example, Miranda Keys in the brand new Forward Unto Dawn and Noble Team in the Falcon Sweep, etc. They've already got the molds in production, so they're going to continue with them. And that's fine by me. We got this cute little barricade. And yes, this doubles as the spare pieces for the actual uh, Heretic Banshee, which is a great choice. I love when you can actually repurpose your spare pieces into something else. Though we do have a bag of spare pieces as well. Obviously you couldn't repurpose this big um, head of the Banshee into anything else. But yeah, a surprising amount of, uh, of pieces actually go into the rebuild. It's uh, There's uh, quite a bit more than just the surface level. And we can actually see that, uh, yeah, this, this doesn't move. I originally thought these might uh, move in and out. They don't. But you know, again, it's just a fun little barricade. And we'll take that apart for the build of the Heretic Banshee, because I'm sure you guys need to see what the Heretic Banshee looks like as well. I would love to have two of these uh, to show off a comparison, but to be honest, um, I'm not going to buy two of these to have one of each Banshee. I will keep my Banshee as the Covenant Banshee because in my opinion, while, while I do really respect what Mega did here, it is an incomplete Banshee. It's still, as I'll show you, it still has a lot of purple sticking out of it and it doesn't really look like a full heretic Banshee. But yeah, before we take it apart, let's take a look at our Banshee. It does come with a little base plate, a uh, simple three-piece. I would love in the future for Mega to just low-key make a thick, long rod, like this long, nice and thick, just kind of like that comes with the, the Seraph, something larger because it always just looks a bit goofy when the Banshee is like just about off the ground. You know what I mean? Like I would like it a lot higher. Small thing aside, we've got this uh, really gorgeous looking Banshee. I like the fact that these are three different printed pieces all together to make the cannons. And this is a, a more subtle way of having a firing mechanism. Cause I know a lot of people are like, oh, firing mechanisms are for kids. But I, 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 and I get that, I get that. But it's nice that these are just sort of hidden away and they could easily be like any part of, oh, hello. <laughs> They could easily be any part of the Banshee and uh, they're not like glaringly obvious. So I respect that. Plus Banshees do have two different cannons, right? Nice little, yeah, nice little kind of cannons on the side. I love how this is smoothed off very nicely. And on the back, it's exposed turbine. That works really well. As you can see here, this does come apart quite easily. A little bit flimsy, but way less flimsy than the banished Banshee we had. Again, same as the Hijack Ghost versus the Ghost of Requiem. This is a huge improvement on the Banshee, huge. It is capped that the wing can't really be raised any higher, which I mean, it's 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 not really a shame either way. They're blocked by these uh, nice angled pieces and uh, everything is super, super well smoothed off here. Like it, it, there's barely any exposed studs. Like it's really nicely designed like that. Uh, the wings are held together by two separate sections clipped in. And if you open this, you can see a gorgeous exposed uh, cockpit interior. This is really nice. I absolutely love this printed detailing, very high quality. And it's nice that it's also on a translucent piece, so it feels like um, some kind of alien tech, right? This is all smoothed off nicely, so is this. It's just a clean Banshee, man. Like, it's just very, very clean. The same as this ghost, where I praised immensely all of these hexagonal, very, very small patterns that you can barely even see. The Banshee has them as well, but a little bit different. They're more like little diamonds on this. And the interesting thing is it's not just all the way across. This is uh, nice and smoothed off, but the texture runs in like several different different sections, even that tiny bit there. And that's just really nice. That's very detailed. And these 
lovely little contoured marks at the back. Just extra detail, man. Just extra little bits of detail go a long way. I think maybe if I was to criticize it at all, these cannons are a little bit too large, maybe. But again, small thing. And I love the color choice. Absolutely love them, this uh, metallic purple. It's not really Covenant purple. I would say it's more in line with Storm Covenant purple. It's it's just gorgeous, man. I can't really fault it for that. And it does also kind of. Uh, I was about to say it does also stand up on its own, but maybe maybe it actually doesn't. And look, these are so quick to uh, to fall off. Really nice. Also, kind of fun how it can like be in uh, in sort of stationary mode. Like it's inside a hangar. You could even have it upside down, like in a loading bay or a mech mech bay, some kind of thing. Really cool. Love these silvers and purples, but now let's see what it looks like as a heretic banshee. Bingo, bango, we've got ourselves a heretic banshee, kind of. I mean, here's the thing. It, it, it's cool in pra- it, like, in theory, it's a really dope idea to be able to switch between the two. In practice, this just leaves me wanting more. Like, this leaves me wanting a full Heretic Banshee, which I, I do wish they'd committed to. There are examples of, like, Mattel, if they have, uh, with Mega, if they have Mattel creations, there is the option that maybe you could sell the rest of the pieces direct to consumer to make a full gold Banshee. But I'm afraid, yeah, like, I, I just, I want more with this. Like, I want a full gold Banshee. And it, it does seem a little strange. I mean, maybe it doesn't. Maybe, in reality, I'm just thinking too, obviously about this. Maybe I'm like trying to imagine exactly what I see in Halo 2 and that's all I want. Maybe this is actually all we do need. Like the purples and the gold still work really well together. It's just because I'm expecting something else that I want something else, you know? And you can see the detailing on the uh, sort of diamond kind of printing. You can even hear the scratch of it. It's so unsmooth. Yeah, it uh, obviously stands out way more when it's such a bold different color. I love how the silvers match the other pieces of silver around this set. Heck, I would have even just replaced half of this with silver. Maybe I will replace half of this with silver once I'm back in England. Hey, that's a that's a project. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll do that, actually, because I probably have all these pieces in silver. They're very, very basic pieces. So stay tuned to see if I do that. Uh, but yeah, in general, I am very impressed with this. I think it is probably the best Banshee we've ever got, and I do enjoy this little barricade as well. I always want more stuff for my dioramas and something for the Arbiter to cower behind. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's good, man. Like, I'm very impressed with this set. I... I'm impressed with what Mega tried to do with this rebuild. I just think, yeah, again, the execution wasn't perfect, but it was a definitely a very good try. And the Banshee itself is arguably the best Banshee we've ever got. This Arbiter is basically, I think he's definitely my favorite Thelvadem we've ever got. This Heretic Elite is really great too. I'm really hoping for a Heretic Grunt in the future. Maybe not totally likely because it would include a lot of new molding when this was already an existing mold, but I don't know. A man a man can dream. So uh, let me know in the comments down below if you've managed to score this. Uh, I know distribution isn't the greatest on earth right now, but I know Mega are trying very hard to improve it every day, day in, day out. As always, you stay awesome, you stay safe out there, folks. Let me know in the comments down below which your favorite Banshee of all time is and how many you've been able to collect. The Heretic Banshee is signing off.